Hi everyone and welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and I'm preparing to feed one of my bins. It's the bin that has my so-called African night crawlers in it and I just refer to it that way because a lot of people have commented suggesting that what they're seeing on my um, African night crawler system is not really African night crawlers. But since that's what I was told that they were when I received their cocoons oh so long ago, I, um, I just continue to refer to them as the African night crawlers. Perhaps someday I'll do some sort of positive identification, figure out what they really are. But for now, this is my African night crawler system. You can see this stuff over here in the foreground. You've got a whole variety of different types of um, shredded newspaper here. We've got some leaves, some shredded cardboard, a whole bunch of different stuff laid out here. In preparation for feeding the the worms I've even got my um, pulverized eggshell I've even got my little scratch pad with notes on it to uh, remind me what it is that we're dealing with here and what we're dealing with here is as you might be able to see on the board a 84 day um, system which equates to 12 weeks at this point which has so far received nine feedings and usually in my book that means the feeding that the bin was originally built with built with counts as the first feeding of the nine. So today, on its um, 84th day in service, it's receiving another feeding, its 10th feeding, uh, a feeding that comes 10 days after the last feeding. So I'm, uh, I'm not really equipped yet with the food that they're going to get yet. I figured we'd do a quick inspection, see how things are coming along, and once we can gauge the requirement, We'll, um, we'll proceed to bringing some stuff down from my freezer with which to feed. So let's get in a little bit closer. I'll slip on a glove and we'll get to work. So just to give you a little closer look at what I've written down here, it's uh, stuff I just mentioned earlier. It's an 84 day old, 12 week old African night crawler system, or maybe I should put African night crawlers in quotes. And today it's receiving its 10th feeding. Uh, coincidentally, I fed a, fed a bin yesterday, which, um, according to my calculations, was receiving feedings every 9.3 days. And it just so happens that the calculated interval between feedings in this bin as well has um, turned out to be 9.3 days too. So, I seem to be kind of on an unintentional uh, pattern here in terms of the frequency of feedings. A lot of times in the past I've kind of checked in pretty frequently, like maybe weekly, but... Um, I've been kind of elongating the time frame between check-ins. I guess mainly because it's summertime. A lot of times I'm going to be away on the weekends and stuff like that. So I, um, I try to get all of my worm maintenance in during the week. Attempting to leave the, the weekend days free for, you know, just in case something happens. Perhaps an opportunity to get out of town, go do something. So, um... Let's see. Yeah, so I think last time we fed, it wasn't all that big of a feeding. I'm curious to see how the um, the progress of the food that we gave them last time is holding up. The, the feedings lately in all of my bins have been focused very heavily on making sure that the feedings go hand in hand with a really generous portion of bedding. So pretty much on every occasion, I use a bunch of fresh leaves to cover up with and then after about eight, you know eight or ten days like we've got going on here these leaves have been sitting in the bin for ten days now and they're probably primed for becoming yummy worm food at this point by sitting here in the bin after all this time so a lot of times I'll just use this stuff down in the feeding area and then introduce nice fresh leaves when I um, when I come when it comes time to cover up I'm sorry, I just got a little distracted, because as I was starting to pull stuff aside here, I, I couldn't help but notice that um, a lot of the worms I'm spotting, you know, I, I see kind of a mature-sized worm here and there, but it seems like just for about every every mature-sized worm that I see, there's, um, there's a little tiny baby worm right alongside it. So it almost seems like they're kind of getting into some sort of like a population explosion in here. Because here, let me see if I can get a little handful of this stuff up closer to the camera. Let's spread it out, you know. I mean, here and there you can see pretty good sized adult worms. But you can see almost as many 
little itsy bitsy tiny worms crawling around everywhere too. It's pretty awesome. And I do know that it was not very long ago, it was not very long ago that we had run the um, the finished compost that these worms previously inhabited in their in their previous um, composting bin we had run sort of like what I refer to as kind of a worm nursery and we were attempting to round up all of the baby worms that um, had come out of the the castings that we had set aside assuming that it was full of worm cocoons all ready to hatch and produce baby worms so it was not that long ago that we introduced um, whatever it was that came together as a result of running that cocoon nursery and we threw them all in here so I'm not quite certain if it's just the transplanted babies that came over from the cocoon nursery or if it's just baby worms that were actually hatched here within this system it's probably a combination of both but it is kind of nice to look down into the feeding area and see you know a good number of worms hanging out enjoying what they received last time and what, were, what they received last time was I don't know, there just seems to be very little, if any, trace of what was put in here last time. I thought that I, a moment ago, had stumbled on something that I recognized. Here it is. So it's kind of the stem of um, some tomatoes. You can still see the flower of the tomatoes and this, the branches. You can even see a worm kind of gripping onto that one flower there. <laughs> so this is one of the few things added to the bin last time that was not frozen. Everything else was all frozen foods. These baby worms really like sticking to my gloves for some reason. I always get worried that I'm gonna walk away with a bunch of baby worms on my glove and have them fall off someplace where they're gonna be unable to get to a safe territory. Oh, I don't remember putting two of them in though. This might have been put in at some point prior. There's just another uh, stem. These are almost like sticks, almost like branches. Stuff that might take a while to break down. So I don't expect that sort of stuff to get broken down very quickly. But everything else that was put in here last time was all frozen fruits and veggies. All stuff that was pretty small particle size. Um, stuff that I would kind of expect to see the um, worms do away with in a fairly short period of time. Uh, with the exception of a couple odds and ends that might take a little bit longer. But for the most part it does seem to me like... You know, just from looking through this feeding area, right down the middle of the container, there does seem to be very little sign of what had been previously put in here as food for these little guys. But this definitely seems to me like a pretty well-populated bin. There's just mounds and mounds of worms anywhere you look in here. And I think I see a piece of plastic that I'm going to pull out of here. I was running a bunch of stuff through the shredder to create my uh, my bedding and that might have just gotten somehow mixed in with the paper. Maybe I was shredding an envelope that had a window. So hopefully we don't find a whole bunch of other shredded plastic in here. Let's see, what else can we see? I guess, you know, don't want to go crazy disrupting what's going on here. And at some point at the end, after we've applied the food, I think we'll explore the outer edges of the bin that we've not yet really checked on. So why don't we, um, now that we've got a nice hole here down the middle, this will probably um, be a good time to take a short break so that I can run upstairs and go grab a few things out of the freezer that we're going to throw in here as they're feeding today. And then after we've covered everything down the middle of the bin up here, and we, um, we bring in the stuff that we shoved off to the side, back in to cover up with we'll um we'll take a quick peek around the outer edges of the bin to see how things are looking look at those tiny tiny worms those little guys look like they must have just been hatched a couple days ago so that's always a really nice promising sign when you see little itsy bitsy worms cruising around your worm bin so we're gonna take a break now I'll return in a few minutes with some food that we'll throw in here for these little guys and then we'll uh, and then we'll check out what's happening on these outskirts of the bin so break time
So now rather than just shutting the camera off while I was upstairs grabbing the food that I bought down for them, which is right here, I, um, I ran my time-lapse camera because when I reviewed the footage from last week, I, I, I watched the video of how this bin looked when we last checked in on it, I did get this feeling like a lot of these little tiny white specks that are all over the place are probably mites. And they're such slow moving little creatures that if you just glance down into the bin, you don't really notice them moving. But when you play back the video quickly, um, it's only then that you can really reveal their movement. So I shot a little bit of time lapse to reveal to myself what kind of mite situation I've got in here. You know, if you're a regular on my channel, you'll know that I've kind of backed off the paranoia of always trying to hunt down the mites and figure out how many mites I've got and what to do about the mites, blah, blah, blah. I've, um, <laughs> I've kind of, you know, forgotten about that for a while now. And I've just been focusing on making sure the worms get what they need. And the mites are usually just a, a regular, you know, participant in the composting process. And they do serve an important function within the bin. But I just want to occasionally try to keep tabs on, you know, how the mite situations in my worm populations are, um, you know, looking. And in here it did seem like there were some mites, and I just wanted to take a moment to get a sense of how many there were. So let's, um, let's grab a handful of this shredded paper that I showed earlier. It's a combination of shredded newspaper as well as shredded paper bag. And I've also, I've also got some slightly bulkier shredded cardboard here, which I think combined with the shredded newspaper makes for a nice little mix. And um, one of my staple food items, which I usually sprinkle across the top of the feeding is the coffee. So we'll set that aside until we're done. And you can see, um, Yesterday basically was clean out the crisper day. <laughs> so regrettably there was a bunch of stuff in the crisper that um, spoiled before there was a chance for it to get consumed. And that consisted of um, a couple pretty good size cucumbers as well as a couple smaller size cucumbers. Some of this stuff was just the, um, the leftovers of hacking up a head of cauliflower. So this is like the stem end of the cauliflower. This is the base of one of its leaves so just trying to chop up some of these um, leaf bits to make them a little bit more manageable in terms of storage so that they can be kept in my freezer bag now here's something that might take a little while it's a it's a whole avocado usually when you feed an avocado it's already been cut open and that's when you realize that the inside of it has gone bad and then it's decided that at that point that it's worm food. But this had already gone so bad that it didn't even need to be cut open to be <laughs> um, determined that it was already past that point. Uh, just to make it easier for the worms to infiltrate though, I did use a knife to punch a few holes into the skin of it. So there's just other odds and ends. Here's some pieces of strawberry. Here's a piece of pear. And I've even got a few chunks of corn corn cob actually. I usually try to take the corn cob and hack it up into small bits because if you put an entire corn cob into your worm bin, um, a lot of you probably already have so you'll know, it takes forever. It just takes forever for the worms to break it down. But I think that that looks like a pretty nice feeding. You know, the stuff like the cucumber, it's almost all liquid, right? Once that stuff starts breaking down, since the stuff was frozen and it starts to thaw out, this stuff is just going to turn to mush. It's going to pretty much transform into liquid almost instantly. And that's going to uh, hydrate all of that dry bedding material that rests right below it. And this stuff here, you know, this coffee is from when I reset the coffee maker last night. So this coffee also has a good amount of moisture in it as does this piece of paper. And this piece of paper will just go in here as additional bedding too. All good stuff, quite a nice feeding. So before we cover it up, I just like to sprinkle a little bit of leafy matter. Oh, but I forgot, right? We're gonna use the fresh leaves to cover up with at the end. So we'll use some of these 
leaves that have already been sitting in the worm bin for 10 days now. We're going to introduce those down into the feeding area that gets covered up nicely. And that should really make for an environment that the worms really enjoy. All that bedding material for them to nibble on. We'll even put these tomato stems right back down in there too. Yeah, that's going to make for a really nice feeding. Because these night crawlers, you know, I'm pretty sure they're night crawlers. Whether they're African night crawlers, though, I don't know. I could be wrong, though. Who knows what they are? But these uh, these worms definitely enjoy the bedding, whether it's cardboard or paper or dry leaves, whatever. The bedding is not only a place for them to live in, it's also uh, a, a carbon-rich food source for them to eat. So it does seem like the feeding area was where the greatest concentrations of worms could be found on this go around. Sometimes we um, sometimes we examine the feeding area and find that the you know the space is not all that heavily populated with worms. And then we find the worms hanging out in you know the outskirts of the bin. But in this particular case, it does seem like the feeding area was the hot spot in which to find worms today. Let's see what we find on the outskirts over here. Lots and lots of really nice material breaking down. You know, after 12 weeks, you would kind of expect it to be that way. Lots and lots of nice fresh castings. And there's a good number of worms populating this stuff too. It's all got a nice dark color to it. And here, what's this? Plum pit. Plum pit is not going to get broken down, but it doesn't matter. Sometimes you find little experimental items like that in my worm bins. And it doesn't matter. At some point it'll just get sifted out and separated from the castings. But, um... I think that's pretty much all we were looking to accomplish today. So the material all looks really nice in here. I abandoned the covering of the material with plastic a few weeks ago. So the only coverings, as you saw in the beginning when I removed them, are paper-based coverings. So we'll, um, we'll start returning all those coverings to this bin now. The first of which is not just a covering, but to me it's also an indicator to show where we last fed. It's this coffee filter showing that the feeding was last applied right down the middle here. And then I usually like to have a couple pieces of top covering paper. In the past I always liked having these top covering pieces of paper when they would rest underneath the plastic because it would become sort of a landing pad for the recirculating moisture that would condense on the plastic and drop back down. And then it would always become a real popular place for the worms, but nowadays with paper and cardboard coverings, the stuff doesn't really get too damp. But it does seem to, you know, serve a good enough um, function of keeping the moisture down within the bin while also allowing for a little bit of airflow. So that's it for today, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.